everyone, it's Danielle. This interview that I am posting is an interview that I published back in the fall, and I am republishing it now. I hope everyone enjoys. The interview you are about to hear was done last month with what was then an anonymous source. Since then, this anonymous source has been identified publicly by other people, so it's no secret that her name is Rachel. Rachel shared some very personal accounts and experiences while she was friends with Casey and Mike Jones. One of those experiences was that Michael Jones himself, not Casey, it was only Michael, Michael had spoke about his desire to poison his ex-wife, Sarah Jones. At the time, Michael Jones was actually still married to his ex-wife, Sarah, and he shared that plan to poison Sarah with Casey. Casey relayed that information to Rachel, and Rachel called in a tip to Crime Stoppers. Unfortunately, we don't know why Crime Stoppers didn't investigate it, or if they did, And we don't know why Crime Stoppers did not contact Sarah Jones. However, it's been stated that somebody else reached out to Sarah during that time and let her know. And we have never stated that in our group. What was done is I personally reached out to Sarah Jones after I did this interview and told her that she may want to listen to it and that Michael had had a plan at one time to poison her. Sarah chose to not answer my message, reply to it, or even acknowledge it. The information was provided to her by myself four years later. In addition, all of the information that Rachel has shared, I have verified through various different sources, and it has all proven to be accurate. Rachel speaks the truth, even if the truth is hard to hear. We originally kept her anonymous because we did not want her to receive any backlash for anything that she shared. Rachel had a friendship with Casey and Mike, and Rachel was also deeply hurt and affected by Casey and Mike. I will now share a message from Rachel in regards to comments that she made surrounding the disappearance of Casey, Mike, and the kids. We know now that Mike was never missing, and we know now that Casey and four children were murdered at the hands of Michael. Because of Rachel and her honesty, a lot has been uncovered regarding Casey's childhood, things that would have never probably been exposed had Rachel not spoken the truth about her. Because of Rachel sharing her truth and her experiences with Casey and Mike, A lot of us who are critical thinkers have looked into the deep history of both sides of Casey and Mike, and a lot has been learned about why they are who they are or were. We wholeheartedly stand behind Rachel and the truth. We will always share the truth, no matter how hard it is to hear. You will see in these messages again that Rachel is very honest. She has integrity and she has compassion. We ask that you please do not be critical of her and that you do not seek her out or message her or harass her. She went through very troubling things with Casey and Mike and it's all just very sad. Please also remember that all of this information can be found in our Facebook group which is linked in the comments below. And all of the information that we share publicly is verified by multiple sources before we share it with all of you. I also shared my messages to Sarah Jones, letting her know that her ex-husband had tried to, not tried to poison her, but had a plan to poison her four years ago in our Facebook group. I'd like to also add before the interview begins that it was stated that Casey hatched a plan with Mike to poison Sarah, and that is not true. We have never said that. Nobody has ever said that. Michael Jones himself is the only person who ever said he was going to poison Sarah Jones, and Casey never had a plan to harm Sarah. And now, on to the interview.
All right, everybody. I have a special guest here tonight. She is going to remain anonymous. She was actually a close friend of Casey Jones, one of the murder victims in the Jones family murders recently that occurred in Florida on September 15th, 2019. The family was discovered murdered and since then, Casey's husband has been charged with her murder and charges are expected in the murder of her four children. So welcome tonight to my guest and again she's going to remain anonymous. I'm going to just go ahead and start with a question. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Okay. How did you meet Casey? I met her. We were working at the same job and uh, at a pet grooming facility locally, and we needed groomers, so they hired her, and that is how I met her. About, okay. gosh, it's probably been about, uh, I want to say, uh, like eight, maybe eight years ago, somewhere around oh, okay, there. so you, you knew her quite a while ago. Yes. Um, did she work there for quite a few years then? She did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I know I had seen that she at one point opened her own dog groom be- grooming business. So I assumed that she was very interested in animals and grooming and all of that. Yeah. She worked with us for a while. And then I know uh, her ex-husband's parents helped her get her own mobile grooming business after okay. she left. Oh, oh, was that after she left? The- mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. Okay, so I've nailed down some dates, and it looks like she got divorced from her ex-husband, the father of the two oldest children that were murdered. She got divorced from him in May, I'm sorry, June of 2015. Um, You didn't really have any interactions with them as a couple? Uh, a couple times I met him the first time I met him we it was a work outing and we had all gone out to Red Robin to get some burgers and that's the first time I ever met him he was pretty quiet reserved didn't say much Uh, she did most of the talking and then on a couple of other occasions I met him but nothing nothing that really stands out okay did they seem happy No, (laughs) no. Okay. Not really. Um, She would always come into work and, and tell us stories about how mean and nasty he was towards her. Nothing that I ever saw when they were together. Cause like I said, he was pretty quiet. He never really said anything. Um, But she would always tell us about how nasty he was to her and to, uh, Cameron uh, especially because this was before Preston was even born but yeah not not nice to Cameron and physically and verbally abusive towards her Hmm. okay I know that Casey was married to her ex-husband Richard Mm -hmm. at the time that she began seeing Mike correct and Mike was also married to his now ex-wife Sarah when he began seeing Casey. Now, do you know, did they meet at work? Is that how they met? They did. When, when she left the grooming salon, she got a job at the veterinary clinic and that is where she met Michael. And she instantly became enamored by him. She would tell us how amazing he was and kind and sweet. And he did all these very sweet gestures for her he would leave her love notes on her car um she had told him about her amish background and he built her inside of a like a box it was a little farm with like little farm animals to make her feel like she was back at home and at the time it seemed like a sweet gesture because like i said we all believed Richard to be pretty much an abusive asshole. So everybody was really happy for her that she right. met somebody who was so nice and charming at the right. time. Right. 
Okay, so we, I know, I know that we we've discussed this in our group at length. Um, you mentioned Mike making her a box or whatever mm-hmm. to signify her hometown and the Amish or whatever Correct. he made. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you and your coworkers, I believe it was, discovered that she was never Amish. Yes, <laughs> uh, she. Had- she had told us like these very intricate stories about her life back in the Amish. Um, the, in fact, the very first night that we really hung out with her was a work outing. We went to a comedy club and on the drive back, she happened to ride with me and another coworker who's, you know, a friend of mine. And she told us about how she used to be Amish and we had a million and one questions for her because Right. Never really okay. knew anybody <laughs> that was Amish before. So it was it was interesting for sure. And, you know, she told us that she left the Amish like as a teenager because of her mother being very promiscuous and ultimately getting her shunned from the community. And that's when right around the same time she met Richard in high school and he and his family kind of saved her from that um they took her into their house and you know they got married and had Cameron (laughs) yeah they got married fairly young I believe they were 18 yeah they were young when they got married and they didn't have Cameron until Oh, it looks like they had Cameron about four years later, four and a half years later after getting married. So mm-hmm. they became parents pretty young. Yep. Um, yeah, the, I don't understand the Amish story. Um, did Mike, did, I mean, she, she clearly told Mike these stories. Oh, yeah. she. I mean, she told everybody. There was a story that she had told us back about an Amish massacre that she was not able to go and console her family during the tragedy because if they would get caught with her, it would mean that they were automatically shunned. And it was breaking her heart that she couldn't be with them. And then, you know, the stories about, like, when they would go away on their two weeks of living non amish life, how they would bury the clothes and like they had their English clothes that they would bury because they can't get caught with them and how she always wanted like a Barbie doll and she couldn't have it because it's not in their culture so remember we had bought her a grooming Barbie doll because of the story she told us and we're like oh my god she would love this you know she said she's always wanted one so yeah it was it's crazy there's so, so you guys stories. you guys brought you and your co-workers bought her a Barbie doll right because she never had one and it was all she wanted as a little girl was to have a Barbie wow. so we found a grooming Barbie and we're like how appropriate <laughs> you know she'll love this and, right right and she did she was so ecstatic she cried it was a, it was a whole thing hmm. yeah <laughs> that is interesting very interesting um now, I'm sure that I know that you worked with both of them, Mike and Casey. So you no, have, I didn't work with Mike. Just you Casey. did, just Casey. Okay, just Casey. But you were around as their relationship progressed. Yes. Okay. I was, and I, as a matter of fact, he even stayed with me for a month, and she had told me that she was in the process of divorcing Richard, and he was in the process of divorcing Sarah and they didn't really have anywhere that they could spend time together and Mm -hmm. she knew that I needed a roommate at the time because the you know the bills were kind of piling up and asked me if he could stay there and he seemed super nice so I agreed and did he like did he pay you rent he was honest Uh, he was supposed to (laughs) he was supposed to oh wow (laughs) um yeah, so I had to, it, that's why it only lasted a month, because I had to basically chase him down. And the only time he was ever really at the house was he was there, and it was kind of like their motel room, I guess. Hmm. 
That's interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all just so bizarre. Trying Very. to figure out, trying to figure out like how this could happen. And I do think that it's very important that we understand the adults in this situation Mm -hmm. to understand how this happened and why it happened. And at the end of the day, Casey is still a victim. She was still hurt. She was still murdered. Um, Absolutely. It's just hard to understand. It's almost like two people who were very deceptive came together and it, in a it, very tragic way. In a very <laughs> tragic way. Yes, yeah. very tragic way. Were you were you present for when Mike robbed the veterinary hospital? Yes. Um I mean present in the sense I wasn't there when he said it. No, 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 not there, but um, like you were in their lives. Yes, um Casey at the time was was staying with my my two bosses. She okay. no longer worked there, but we were all still very much in contact. And they offered her a place to stay because this was right around the time that the, I believe the divorce was getting finalized or it, either way, they weren't living in the house. So they were, she was staying in their back house on their property. And then she told us about Michael robbing the veterinary clinic. And both of my bosses were like horrified to hear about all of this and they're like we don't want him anywhere near our house don't bring him there whatever you do and of course she agreed and she's like no absolutely not you know I'm not going to bring him there you know they're looking for him he's on the run or whatever and you know we found out that he stole a bunch of money I think it was like a like a tablet or something and I know he stole a car and also a firearm. And my, my bosses were really concerned about the firearm. And Casey repeatedly told them, no, um, this is an older gun. It doesn't even fire. It's just a decorative thing. Um, he has it for sentimental reasons. So later on, we find out that she indeed was hiding Michael, you know, on their property. And the gun was working perfectly fine. <laughs> it wasn't an old gun. Um, I I want to even say, I think it was loaded. So, you know, so he, he robbed them and then she hid Michael on their own property. Correct. And then at some point he fled, um, allegedly to New Mexico. And she was very upset about that. And, you know, she told me like, I can't believe he would do this. You know, I thought that he loved me and, blah 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 and just very confused and at one point told me he mentioned to her that he thought about taking some medication from the vet's office and that he was going to use that on Sarah to basically get her out of the picture so they could you know live happily ever after because there was a ton of friction between Casey and Sarah obviously you well, know yeah, they sure. all work together and you know Casey knew that Michael was married to Sarah and she didn't care you know so right. obviously there was a ton of uh, ton of friction in that whole three-way triangle yeah I can't imagine and and I <laughs> I asked her I'm like are are you I mean, do you think he would do something like that? And she said, I don't know. I didn't think he would do something like this. And immediately after I hung up the phone with her, I called Crime Stoppers anonymously and I reported it. And nothing right. ever came from that that I know of. Um, but it, like, it, it just blows my mind because she 100% knew that this guy is crazy enough (sighs) to tell her something like that and she was still so enamored and in love with him so you reported it to crime stoppers that mike had told casey that he was going to the medication he was going to take medication from the vet's office and he was going to kill his 
wife, he said he ex-wife, was thinking Sarah. about doing it. Those were her words that he was considering taking some medication and using it on Sarah. Now, I don't I'm assuming that he had this conversation with her prior to robbing the vet clinic, because how would he get back in there at that point to then take the medication? It's it was just very strange. And the thought of it made me feel very uncomfortable. And I'm like, if anything happens to this woman, I don't want to have that on my conscience. So absolutely. And, I you know, sure. it, we know now and just recently, you know, this is coming back to current times. The last two weeks before Mike was arrested and found with Casey's body in his car, he stayed with his ex-wife, Sarah. Right. So it's kind of disappointing to know that you reached out as a good Samaritan and called Crime Stoppers and reported this, you know, that he was speaking about poisoning his ex-wife to kill her and get her out of the picture. And apparently nothing was really ever done about that nothing was uh, yeah like I said not as far as I know nothing was done about it now as soon as I saw that she was missing and I initially thought you know that they were all on the run but then things started coming out that like oh Mike Mike was seen and somebody said they spoke to him on this day and it's just Casey and the kids missing and in the pit of my stomach I knew I'm like he did something to her I don't know about the kids but if she's missing he did something to her and I called the Marion County Sheriff's Office and I said hey listen I think that he did something to her this is why and then I told them about that whole conversation with Crime Stoppers and Mm -hmm. I mean I haven't heard anything back from any of them but yeah they it just didn't sit well in my stomach I I'm like no something something happened at that absolutely I mean that wouldn't sit well with me either and you know I'm sure I don't know Sarah um obviously but I'm sure if she had known I would think that if she had known you know four or five years ago that Mike had made comments about poisoning her to kill her I'm not sure that she would have let him stay at her house the last two weeks before he was arrested she probably would have had no contact with him I would I would hope not but from my perspective right now it doesn't seem like she makes the best choices regarding him yeah I mean I wouldn't ever let somebody back into my life that cheated on me abandoned me you know with three kids one of those kids being a newborn baby to go and run off with our coworker, and right. then to let that person back in my life uh, no <laughs> yeah no. from my understanding Sarah was actually on maternity leave when Casey and Mike began their affair that is what I was told is that um and it you know it came from somebody close to the veterinary hospital that Mm-hmm. That Sarah was actually on maternity leave when Casey and Mike began their affair. So, yeah, I mean, as a woman that's being, you know, putting yourself in Sarah's shoes, that's that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah, she had a newborn baby. She had two other children. That was her husband. And at the same time, you know, Casey was married and had a husband. And mm-hmm. also, from what I understand... After Casey and Mike began their affair, they didn't stay together, from what I understand. Like, they kind of, he kind of bounced back and forth between Casey and Sarah. I, I can only speculate that it, it's, like, a maybe, like, a jealousy thing. Like, I don't know. Because maybe from Sarah's perspective, it was, like, Casey stole her man And now she has the opportunity to like stick it to her, you know, and the opportunity presented itself, I guess. But I know that initially during the beginning of their relationship, Casey was very confrontational towards Sarah about it, very much rubbing it in her face. Like, you know, you don't deserve him. He's so wonderful. And, 
your loss is my gain sort of thing. So oh. it, it wasn't very nice. Yeah, that's not nice. Um, so at some point after he, I, I know he bounced back and forth between the two, um, at least up into the point when Mercalli was born. I have spoken to sources who shared that information with me um, Mm -hmm. and explained that like during, I think a good portion of Casey pregnancy with Mercalli, Mike wasn't really involved. I think he had went back to Sarah or maybe not went back to Sarah, but maybe he was playing the field. I don't know. I don't know if the guy was a playboy or whatever, whatever he thought he was, but um, in the meantime, in July of 2015, while all of these divorces are going on, and I think the, the divorces were actually both just final, Sarah and Mike's divorce was final in May of 2015, and Casey and Rich's divorce was final in June of 2015. In July of 2015, Mike is arrested for robbing Mm -hmm. the veterinary clinic. And it seemed like at that time, is that the time, because I know there's also the story out about his mother. Is that when everybody discovered the the story about his mother being deceased was not true? I'm... It's been a while, so I'm trying right. to reach back in my mind to see uh, exactly when that story took. I, I venture to think it was very, very much close to that same time frame. I believe so, just from reading the police reports, because I know both Sarah and Casey admitted in the police reports that they knew that his mother was not dead mm-hmm. and that he had... I forget how he obtained money. He got money or something from coworkers, his bosses to go up to Vermont and get his mother's ashes. Yeah. I can't speak for Sarah knowing, but I know for a fact that Casey did because she was on Facebook looking. uh, She found his mother on Facebook and she was very much alive. So I, Venture. Casey found his mother on Facebook? Yes. <laughs> so that's how she learned that he lied about yes. <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah, she was she was on Facebook and actively posting things. Cuz something something about the story wasn't adding up to her and she went on Facebook and did a little bit of digging and found his mother and saw that his mother was alive. And wow. How did Casey react to finding out that the man she loved had just told her this giant I mean that's a huge lie that's a huge huge lie yeah it's um, a terrible lie at that to say that your mother's dead to be honest she wasn't as shocked as you would expect it was just like oh she's not dead you know it wasn't like oh my god the the betrayal and I I think in a way she could almost relate because essentially her entire life was a lie. Everything that, you know, any of us who knew her knew to be true was not, you know, and it all started right. unfolding like little, little things, little lies that she would be caught in and just, it started s- snowballing basically until Eventually, everything that we knew just proved to not be true. So maybe uh, kindred spirits. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that very well could be. Um, do you have any other examples of stories that she told that you and your coworkers figured out were false? Because I know it wasn't just you no, that, <laughs> that figured out that these things that were being said were not. Well, there was a night... Um, there was a night at my house where I had a barbecue and it was Casey was there. Michael was there. Um, Preston was a newborn. He was there, a friend of mine. And we were just, you know, having a bonfire out back and she's trying to put Preston to bed. And she said something 
along the lines of I wish that I had brought my my violin because I always play the violin for him to fall asleep and my friend just looked at her very strangely and she's like huh okay you know we've been in her house like we know you don't have a violin and she she asked her she's like looking up YouTube you know YouTube videos and she's like well what's your favorite violinist and she just looked baffled like ah there's there's just so many I can't choose one and it's like oh okay <laughs> like just just give us one and she couldn't you know because it it was bullshit <laughs> and then there was a night um when Michael was still staying with me at this at this point and she was still living with Richard they were still married and she called him crying freaking out saying that rich was coming after her and he had been arrested like a day or two prior on a domestic and that he's she has a restraining order against him which it didn't even make sense because you can't have a restraining order on somebody that you live with (laughs) right Michael started freaking out and he's like, we have to go over there. You know, we have to go see what's going on. So um, I said, okay. You know, we jumped in the car and we started driving over and he called the police station and said, you know, she's over there. She's being attacked by him. He has a restraining order. I'm not going to make it there for 15 minutes. Somebody needs to get over there. And very clearly, you know, this was on speaker and I could hear it. The police said, we don't know what you're talking about. Um, There's no domestic that's been in the past couple of days. There's no restraining order. And she wouldn't come out of the house when we got there. She just told him, oh, um, that's because Richard's parents are really in good with the police department. So they probably got that wiped from the record. And Richard's parents lived in Indiana. I was so. just going to say, his family, <laughs> his family was all in Indiana. Any sense. And I'm like, the parents live in Indiana. How do they have pull with the Tavares Police Department? That doesn't make sense, you know? Right. Um, and at that point, that's when things were starting to click. And, you know, I was telling my coworkers, uh, we were talking about it. And I said, you know, I don't know what to believe because either situation is bad like do I want to believe that my friend is being abused by her husband on a regular basis or do I want to believe that she's not and she's lying about it like I don't know what's worse so yeah it's just uh it was very weird and that's when like I said when things started to to click and Mm -hmm. come together and yeah just wasn't wasn't making much sense yeah it's all just very very bizarre it's hard to wrap your head around it all because yeah I mean and she would come into work with the uh, she came in one day with this scratch that she said was like you know Richard had like pulled her uh, grabbed her or something but it was it was very clearly a scratch and you're a dog groomer that's also working part-time at the vet's office, you know, because she would work with us. I think it was Wednesday. It would be like the only day. I think that was the day that they were closed was Wednesday. So that would be the only day she was grooming with us. But it was, it was very obviously not like in a, like somebody grabbed you or punched you. It was very clearly an animal scratch. Right. Right. Now, when did your friendship dissolve with her? Was it after the burglary or did it continue? It was it was very shortly after the burglary when we started to put everything together. We realized like she was obviously helping him mm-hmm. with this burglary. She was telling everybody that she was in the hospital like at the time that it was taking place, sending pictures of her with an IV in we reverse imaged like reverse searched that image and it was a google image you know and there was a you know a picture of her laying in a bed 
with a blanket pulled up over her and a sliding like metal like like you know like a garage door that you open up right we saw that in the back and we're like what the hell is that and we text her like what is that door behind you and she said oh that's you know I'm in the hospital room but that's the door that they use to bring the dead bodies in and we're like what like that's the morgue like why would you're in the ER why would you right oh my that doesn't make any sense and then the, the closer you look you can clearly see that it's like a like a storage shed door like that goes up Hmm. so yeah it was it was getting very very weird and she was saying she was in the hospital we knew it was a lie and ultimately you know that day just proved that she wasn't because she was at a a tattoo place getting matching tattoos with michael (laughs) oh is that the tattoo he he got the tattoo on his stomach that, that day correct he did he got the tattoo on the stomach um she was able to bring him back from where he was hiding out by texting him pretending to be my boss saying like Casey's Casey's in the hospital this is an emergency you know she really needs you right now the doctors are saying she might not make it you know she's pregnant with the baby and that was another thing you know she had told us about all these miscarriages that she had and like how getting pregnant was so hard for her one of my co-workers offered to be her surrogate like it was crazy <laughs> none of this was true none of it was wow. true um wow. she wasn't pregnant at this time uh like I said she was pretending to be my boss texting him like you need to come like she's coding they're all racing in there we don't think she's gonna make it um she just loves you so much and that's how she lured him back. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that your boss, actually, that's how they caught Michael, was because your boss kind of flipped <laughs> it on Casey and allowed her to work there and followed her Correct. through the tattoo parlor. Correct. Yes. And... You know, they found out that Mike was in that tattoo parlor with her and called the cops and the cops go in and there's Mike and Casey getting matching tattoos. And I believe he was holding her hand while she was getting her tattoo. That I'm not sure of, but when she confronted about the whole thing, we're like, what the hell are you doing there? Like, what's going on? And she said that they, they had lost the baby and that they were getting tattoos as a memorial for their deceased child, like trying to spin it to make it seem like I didn't help him escape or help him with this robbery or anything. You know, we're just mourning the loss of our child. And it it was all bullshit. All of it. Wow. So yeah, it's hard to even make sense of all of that. (laughs) Um, we lived do, it, you know, we said yeah. at the time, we're like, this is like a Lifetime movie or something. Like, it, right. it should be made into a movie because it was so crazy. Everything was so crazy and hard to believe. But it yeah. is very crazy <laughs> and hard to believe. And do you know, um, now did her, these stories that she would tell you, did they start before she was with Mike? Or did yes. they get worse as she got with Mike? Like, I, I want to say... No, no, I'm sorry, not the day I met her. The first day that we went to the comedy club on the way home was when she started with the whole Amish stories and all of that. So that was immediately when she first started working there. So, yeah, pretty much from day one, it was just lies, constant lies. Wow. And her her current husband went to the comedy club with you, correct? No, he was no. not there that night. He was there okay. the night that we went to Red Robin for burgers. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I just, it's a lot to sit and ponder about. I almost wonder if maybe, hey. you know, meeting Mike, it was, it was clearly the worst possible thing that could have ever happened to her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but did you ever see this coming from him? I mean, he lived in your house. 
he did no um it was I hate to sound like everybody else that knew him initially but at the very beginning he seemed really sweet like he genuinely cared about her and you know it was very the whole uh, veterinary robbery was like whoa what (laughs) um but no would I ever imagine that he would when I first met him like kill her and all the kids absolutely not no yeah it's it's horrendous my my views on him started to change around the time of the robbery when when I found all of that out and when I you know she mentioned about him going to get the pills for Sarah I mean that was very disturbing that was the most disturbing thing yeah that's that's extremely disturbing um and that also you know it shows his thought process because that would have been if I'm figuring out dates correctly I know that she had Preston in August of 2014 by the beginning of July 2015 which was it was less than nine months later you know she's in a whole different relationship with Mike and Mm -hmm. Mike is robbing this place Mm -hmm. and it's just crazy to me to see how fast the the events in her life and Mike's life like just flip flop. They both went from being married with families to being together, and then he's on the run for robbing his boss. Right, and it wasn't his, just a robbery. Not, I mean, it was. And it wasn't took, just his boss. It was his best friend. Right, you know, they treated him to, like family. To her and according to him, they were very close. Right, right. I know, I know that, you know, the owners of the veterinary hospital that he robbed, they treated Mike like family to the point that they bought him a car and let him make payments on it. They got him and Sarah a a home. Mm -hmm. Um, They were very, very good to him. And he turned around and he robbed them. And he didn't just rob them. Like he took a gun. He took money. He took the car that they had bought that he was supposed to return. He took Xanax. But at the same time, that doesn't make a murderer. So, like, what? I don't know how somebody goes from that to murdering their wife and their four kids. I don't know. I I, I can't imagine that Casey was an easy person to live with. From what I knew about her, I mean, she... Like I said, you know, she was constantly lying about everything. Uh, Her ex-husband and all of that alleged abuse. And it was, it was a lot, you know, there's, there was a lot, a lot of lies and not remotely saying that gives him a reason to kill her or the children in any kind of way. But I just don't think that she was an easy person to have a life with right and at the same time mike was a pathological liar as well right correct i mean he lied about serving in the war he said he was in a war that he was never in and he lied about his mother being dead and he he used that storyline to get money from people Mm -hmm. and it's just crazy it's absolutely crazy very I don't think I really have any more questions for you maybe what was Casey's personality like was she friendly was she funny yeah, absolutely she was very bubbly like our, all the customers loved her she was very nice very sweet it was like I said it was very much a surprise to learn all of the things that we we did you know <clears throat> there was another coworker of ours who she had everybody convinced was like a dog kidnapper. It was crazy. (laughs) Um, The woman would watch her dogs all the time. And she made up these lies about her saying she had her garage code and she was coming in there trying to steal her dogs. And, you know, I didn't know this woman very well at the time. So I'm like, Oh my God, like, that's crazy. And, you know, we all kind of thought like she was this weird 
dog napping freak show and it turned out not to be the case at all um just really weird stuff there was a lot of lies that went around especially with animals she's had a lot of animals in the time that I've known her and nobody knows where any of them are today so that was another thing that was yeah actually I believe (laughs) we've um in our group we've discussed the animals and nobody seems to know where was it a Frenchie their their most recent animal that they had gotten in April I believe was a Frenchie a puppy I believe so named Willow and I actually contacted the Marion County Sheriff's Office myself and asked them, you know, what I know that you found Casey and the four kids. Have you found the dogs? And their response mm-hmm. to me was, we aren't aware of any family pets in this investigation. Yeah, I, it's weird. I, I know that people were questioning where the dogs were, but honestly, like from the time I met her, she when I first met her, she had one dog and that was a Boston Terrier named Jasmine. Jasmine was really sweet, very hyper. Um, And then later on, Casey started saying she was getting vicious and she attacked uh, a friend, a a mutual friend's neighbor's dog. Uh, And then I found out that that wasn't true at all after the fact. And then all of a sudden, nobody ever saw Jasmine anymore. And we would ask her, you know, where's Jasmine? And she said, oh, well, you know, because Rich and I are getting divorced. He's going to keep Jasmine because it's going to be easier for Cameron. You know, if we're separated, you know, Cameron will have some sort of comfort, you know, if Jasmine's there at her dad's house, at his dad's house. And that made sense. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, okay, whatever. Um, And then she also had this rescue named Chewy, who she rehomed for I don't remember what reason. There was two cats. Uh, I don't know what happened to the one. I have the other cat because she told me that the cat kept shitting in her baby's uh, crib. And Richard threatened to throw him outside uh, into the wild. He had three legs and Mm. he was declawed. And I'm like, there's no way (laughs) that cat is getting thrown out. I will take him. And, you know, then she got Clover, which is my, my dog's sister. And she's a little multi poo. And uh, yeah, nobody knows what happened to Clover. And then there was supposedly a pug after her and then Willow. And none of those animals are accounted for except for the one that I took, the one cat. So I don't know where any of the rest of them are. Uh, And looking back, I honestly think that she would adopt these animals in and love them for a short period of time and then get tired of them. So I don't know if that's what happened with Willow or with Clover or from what I have heard about Willow, Willow was a gift that she got Mike. Um, and actually I believe it was neighbors who said that he took that dog everywhere with him. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think that's where the concern comes in for that dog because it was his dog. He took it everywhere with him, but nobody knows where it is today. And it's maybe he knows, sadly. Um, maybe he knows, or maybe they had gotten rid of the dog, you know, sometime prior to him murdering Casey and the four kids. Very possible. I guess we will never know unless he says something about it because from yeah. what I gather online, nobody seems to know where any of them are. So, Including the cops. Yeah. Including yeah. the cops don't even know. So, yeah. So this is, it's been a great interview. It's been great talking to you. Um, <laughs> a lot to take in. Yep. I'm and sure. a lot to consider still. Um, I do want to express to our listeners that whatever shared today that doesn't mean that anybody thinks that Casey was deserving of being murdered because she absolutely wasn't no she was a victim she is a murder victim we are just trying to better figure out the adults in this situation and how this happened and understand their lifestyle and their personality and get some insight because there was a few you know we were all when this case came out we were all trying to figure it out and there was, you know, a love triangle 
between Mike, Casey, and Sarah, and then you have Mike staying at Sarah's house the last two weeks with bodies stored in his van parked outside her house. So I think, you know, this does give some better insight on the dynamics of Mike and Casey together. So thank you very much for the sure, information you helps. shared. <laughs> yes, thank you. We will talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.